This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 4.2. This time we're going to look at combining functions algebraically. And remember, this is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. The big thinking is when we add and subtract, the function is going to behave like the most dominant term. For example, if we have f of x equals x cubed plus x, and g of x equals x squared plus square root x, h of x equals f of x plus or minus g of x is going to behave most like x cubed. When we multiply, the combined function will behave like the product of the dominant terms. So if we have the same f and g, it's going to behave like x cubed times x squared, which is x to the fifth or a quintic function. And dividing, it's going to behave like the quotient of the dominant terms. So this is going to be like x cubed divided by x squared. So this is going to behave like a linear function. Since we're talking about functions, it's good to look at the definition of a function again. This is the function name or letter. You already know some function names, such as sine, cosine, tangent. Those are all functions. Normally we have a parameter, and it's also called an argument or input, and it comes from the domain. The parameter doesn't always have to be x. It can be y, it can be z, it could be theta, as in our trig functions. When we evaluate a function at a particular value, we get a result or a value. And the output is in the range. OK, let's evaluate this function at f of negative 6. So we're using the same function here. Always use brackets when substituting. So negative 6 to the power of 4 plus negative 6 to the power of 3 plus square root minus negative 6 minus 5. This is even, so it gives us a positive value, 1296. The power is odd, so that gives us negative 216 plus root 6 minus 5. And we could take one more step to simplify. This is 1075 plus root 6. Now, we don't have to have a single value here. We can have an expression here. So f of 4 minus 7, we just put 4 minus 7 in brackets to the power of 4, or you can simplify this to just negative 3. 4 minus 7 to the power of 3, square root, negative 4 minus 7, minus 5. So we have negative 3 to the power of 4 plus negative 3 to the power of 3 plus root 3 minus 5. This is 81 minus 27 plus root 3 minus 5. And this simplifies to 49 plus root 3. And we can also substitute a variable expression. So this is y squared minus 5 in brackets to the power of 4 plus y squared minus 5 to the power of 3 plus square root negative y squared minus 5 in brackets and minus 5. And we can just do one more simplification. y squared minus 5 to the power of 4 plus y squared minus 5 to the power of 3, plus square root 5 minus y squared, then minus 5. OK, let's look at some examples. We want to do addition. Another way of writing f of x plus g of x is to put bracket f plus g bracket of x. 
So for the following examples, we're going to have f equal to x cubed plus x, and g of x is equal to x squared plus x. The domain of f is all reals. The range of f is all reals. The domain of g is x is greater than or equal to 0. And the range of g is y is greater than or equal to 0. So this is simply x cubed plus x squared plus x plus root x. I rearrange the function from highest power to lowest power. Here we have a special case for the range. in that we have all positive terms. So that means we know the minimum value is zero. So the domain of h is x is greater than or equal to zero. And the range of h is y is greater than or equal to zero. Now let's look at subtraction. We have x cubed minus x squared plus x minus root x. To figure out the range, the domain of h is x is greater than or equal to zero because of the square root. The range of h is a little bit more complicated. And you would use your calculator to find this out. Uh, we do this by looking at the function. This is a cubic function. It's going off to positive infinity. So we need to look for a minimum. Let's look at multiplication. We have x cubed plus x times x squared plus root x. And again, we have a case where all positive terms. This means the domain of h is x is greater than or equal to 0. The range of h is y is greater than or equal to 0. We are restricted because of the square root x. Let's look at dividing x cubed plus x over x squared plus root x. x equals 0 is our NPV. We note that in the denominator, all positive terms. So the domain of h, x is greater than or equal to 0, and the range of h y is greater than or equal to 0. Occasionally, questions will be formed in the reverse direction. So instead of finding the combined function, we want to find the original functions. And usually, there's many solutions. So pick easy ones. For example, k of x equals x to the power of 4 minus 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 10. Find f, g, and h such that k of x equals f of x plus g of x minus h of x. So let f of x equal x to the power of 4. Let g of x equal these two terms. Because these are both positive, we're looking for plus g of x. 2x squared plus 10 and h of x. Let this be the negative term, so 3x cubed. And just as an illustration, let's show you another solution. f of x equals x to the power of 4 again. g of x equals negative 3x cubed. And h of x equals negative 2x squared minus 10. Clearly, the positive solutions look easier. Let's look at another one. h of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. Find 
f and g such that h of x equals f times g of x. Since we're multiplying, a good thing to do would be to factor. So x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals x minus 3, x minus 2. So f of x equals x minus 3, and g of x equals x minus 2. Try not to give the trivial solution. The trivial solution is just setting f equal to h of x, which is x squared minus 5x plus 6, and g of x equals 1, because 1 times anything is itself. But this is a trivial solution, and I won't accept it for a test. Last example h of x is equal to x cubed, find f and g such that h of x equals f of x divided by g of x. Again, we have a trivial solution, f of x equals x cubed, and g of x equals 1. But again, please do not use this trivial solution. So, you might think that f of x equals x to the 4, g of x equals x is a good solution. However, this doesn't work because we have an NPV where x equals zero. Here, we have no such NPV. There is no non-permissible value. So a valid solution, I'm just gonna put an x through that. A valid solution is f of x equals 3x cubed, g of x equals 3. This works and has the same domain. And that completes this lesson.